All right, we are back with another Prospects Live 2021 MLB Draft Show. Tonight, I'm joined by Tyler Jennings, one of our scouts here at Prospects Live, kind of our one of our film and in-person scouts, if you will, a lot of access to the actual events. And we also have James Weiser with us, who recently joined the team, but has been just a, an integral part of, of getting us content, getting us looks, getting us his live thoughts of guys that we get on camera. Uh, Tyler and James were both at Area Code Games here a couple of weeks ago, and, and they got the best live looks that Prospects Live has. Um, they're some of the best in the business, and uh, we want to talk to them a little bit about their thoughts of this 2021 draft class and exactly how it's shaken out and who stood, uh, who stood out. So, Tyler, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to toss it over to you first, man. Uh, Area Code Games is always one of the bigger events every summer for these, for these high school juniors going into senior year. Uh, to stand out. What are your thoughts? Who who kind of stood out for you and maybe who took their game to another level? Yeah, so th there are plenty of kids that actually look really good out there. And I was pretty happy that I kind of got moved from California to Georgia so I wouldn't have to fly. Um, but I think the the best um, you know pitcher that we had at the event was Chase Petty. He started uh, the first game 8 a.m. and the first four pitches he threw were 99, uh, change it to almost such 90 and then two 100s against Tamar Johnson. Uh, he looked really, really good. And I think James can stick up for this too. The uh, fastball, I, he was 95, topped out 100, uh, routinely 95, 98. Uh, change up looked really good as well. He got Brady House on it a couple of times, um, as well as a slider that was just a cement mixer. And I mean, it was a really, really good pitch. Um, there were a couple other guys that impressed me as well. Uh, most of the Yankees had like Josh Baez, Benny Montgomery. Those guys really stood out to me personally. Uh, Benny, we saw him preach national. Um, really, really good bat speed. Uh, I know you've thrown out the uh, something where it was a 60 grade across the board for him. And I personally see it as well. So uh, Baez as well, two-way guy. He touched 95, 97 on the mound. Um with the bat, he crushed the 14 foot bomb to the opposite field. Uh, he's got power to all fields. I think he's going to be an outfielder at the next level. Not necessarily a pitcher because he's still, I don't want to say he's a little raw at it, but he, there's stuff to work on that with the mechanics and everything. It's a little wonky, but he gets everything to work well with him. Um, the Nationals guys, really the pitching was more uh, – it was better than the hitting, in my opinion, because the hitting was – the line was kind of a little weaker considering how stacked it was. Uh, Brady House struggled a little bit. Um, Tommy White, James Woods were a couple other guys that didn't really get going all that well. But um, I know with uh, Josh Hartle, Philip Abner, the two North Carolina kids that we had on the Nationals roster, I know you love Abner. Uh, I know you had your take on the video I sent you from uh, – his outing against the Royals. So, I mean, he can command the fastball at any part of the zone that he can really want to at that point. Uh, slider looks good. She has a good changeup as well. Hartle, he did get a little roughed up. I know Alex Mooney had two or three hits off of him throughout the outing, but he still had a you know plus pitch or three plus pitches actually of a fastball changeup and a it's a little more of a slurve, but it. Still work really well, and they all tone pretty well. So um, those are my favorites for the first couple of teams. So I'll let James take over from here. Cool. Yeah, um, James, let's hear it, man. Yeah, for me, it was – I fell in love with the White Sox team, um, kind of being from the Midwest and realizing, you know, a lot of these guys didn't have a chance to play this spring due to the uh, coronavirus and COVID-19 shutting everything down. And it was just impressive to see – how they kind of took it as a challenge maybe and came back stronger and just looked like they didn't hadn't missed anything. You know, um, a lot of, it was a deep, deep roster. I mean, you know, right at the top of it, there was Braylon Bishop, uh, who's one of the top names. It was exciting. He had a triple, basically clear triple in the first game against the Yankees. Um, and yeah, he was just a fun player to watch. Uh, he also had Drew Gray, who's been, an exciting two-way player um, who kind of started moving up on people's rosters after national. Um, and again, he was again impressive at, at 
area code games. Um, I really like Ian Mahler. He's incredibly fun to watch. It's, he's a guy who can stick a catcher, but who's not your typical catcher where he's just, he's a special offensive player. who has got a ton of power. Mm-hmm. Um, and then they had good pitchers on there. Um, like Christian Little, he, he impressed. I mean, he didn't maybe have a standout because it's kind of what you see from him all the time, but it still was good. And I just wanted to make sure we put his name out there. Carter Jensen's another guy who was really fun to watch. A lot of power from the left side that you feel can stick at catcher. Dalen Lyle was a guy who you know, everybody fell in love with, especially after his five-hit game, um, with, which included the walk-off in the last game against the Nationals. So he was just super exciting bat from the left side. Uh, Colson Montgomery, Alex Mooney, there's so many names on there um, that just showed up and impressed. Well, let me ask you this. Uh, Dalen Lyle is a a name that we've been pretty high on here for for the better part of a month and a half or so. Um, Ralph and I both think that this kid could have, you know, one of the top two or three hit tools, pure hit tools in in this class. Seven hits. I think he was seven for 14 at area code games. I mean, did it seem like he was just a cut above the rest of some of these kids throughout the event? He, he just, he put everything together. Um, tools wise, I think like the guy who always seemingly stands out at everything, every event we've been to so far is Benny Montgomery. Um, I think that Benny's a little bit more toolsier, but Dale and Lyle's not far behind and they're, you know, it's, you want to take the righty who maybe the tools play up a little bit more or a lefty whose bat you trust as well. You know, both guys are really fun to watch. And I think that they, that Dale and Lyle moved up more to the, that class, that type, that tier with the showing. Well, Tyler, let me ask you, I know Benny Montgomery has been kind of a hot topic, especially in these circles. Um, yeah, he might have the loudest tools. He might be the best pure athlete in this class. Um, You've been to a couple of these events now. You've seen Bonnie Montgomery's swing. You've seen its its progression. How did it look at area code games? Is the hitch still present? Uh, talk to us a little bit about how comfortable he's looking at the plate. Yeah, I, he looked really comfortable to me because when we saw him at PG National, he lit up the he lit up uh, batting practice. He had, he did look really good in game as well. Um, here he did the same thing. Uh, the first game, I do believe, he had an uh, exit velocity of ninety eight and one hundred. Uh, he also had three hits the first game, I do believe, and he just looked really solid at the play. It's an unorthodox setup a little bit, um, but he makes everything work. Uh, he's still got a strong arm as well. He, he's going to look like a really good corner outfield bat in the future, and I feel like um, he's going to definitely have one of the better hit tools, and he's definitely going to have developing power because it's definitely showing up now. Uh, he's had a really good summer with the pop, with his bat this year, so... I think he's looking. He's going to be a really good kid, and he's going to be a top pick. I think next next June. Yeah, yeah. Benny's got a huge frame to uh, to dream on. It's it's long. It's broad. Uh, he he just hasn't filled it out yet. So, uh, yeah. I mean, I think uh, we've talked about it before on these shows. Um, the swing is you either believe in it or you don't, and all it takes is one team. And the tools are so loud that if one team does believe in it, uh, Benny could very easily see himself, you know, top 20, top 30 pick here in 2021. I want to talk to you both about Brady House because this is the first opportunity that we've had to check out Brady House at one of these premier showcases. Uh, He's done the regional events. He's done some smaller events, especially as a high school sophomore going into his junior year. James, I'll start with you. Um, What were your thoughts and impressions of Brady House against some of the more elite arms, these arms that have better velocity and better breaking balls? How did he stack up? Um, to me, when I was watching Brady, it, it wasn't too different from what I'd seen a year ago. Although, you know, he seemed, it seemed like he was being pressed and trying to impress a little bit too much. Um, so he chased a little bit more than you'd like to see. But, I mean, he's a young player. There's ton, there's a ton to like with the fact – the thing I was most impressed with him on was last year when I saw him, it looked like he, he's got a body that naturally looks good at third base. But he was actually really – impressive in the field at shortstop showing range and will make some really impressive plays and that really stood out to me um the power's there he's a, he i think he got gained more speed from a year ago so he's more a lot more athletic and more dynamic more dynamic than he was but to me it was yeah he does have some swing and miss for sure 
but that's true of a lot of power hitters. You know, with how much are you gonna, willing to live with, and how much better can he get with making contact? Sure. How about you, Ty? Yeah, I'm the same way. He did struggle a lot uh, against breaking balls. He was kind of just leaning out to get to him a little bit. Um, I know you noticed too, um, Joe, because he was standing up a bit more upright in his stance, um, which probably is why he was swinging and missing more breaking balls away. Um, he only had two hits really to show out for it, but they were both real struck. I think one was 97. I don't know the other one because Trackman decided to die on us about halfway through, but now he, I still believe in him. I think the power is definitely his biggest tool. He's going to have a solid hit tool, I think, as well. Um, running, he's, I mean, for a kid his size, it, being a high schooler, I don't think he's going to run too well, but it's not necessarily a knack on him at all. His defense looked really good as well. Uh, we bring up Benny, the first game that Benny beat out a single, which was 98 mile an hour at the velocity. Uh, Brady House just dove to his right about through him out. Um, it looked really, really impressive. He's got a strong arm. I think he's he's still the one of the best prep guys that is out on the board for most draft for most teams, really. So I I just wish I could see more of him because I know he can still I still want to see what he can do, say later in the fall or even in the spring if we have a season. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we're definitely going to get a better look at him, um, or maybe just a, a more progressed look at him uh, at the PGL American game. You got to remember this is. Uh, the first premier event that he's been to, and 95% of these kids, uh, they've gone through PG National, they've gone through East Coast Pro, they've gone through WWBA, um, and he's, he's only gone to two of those events. So he's still uh, reasonably fresh on the circuit. Uh, you kind of want to wait and see what he does at you know, PG All America and uh, through the fall and into the spring. That's a, that's a very good point. Um, I want to talk to you guys. Uh, I, I want to stick on the 2021 draft class for just maybe one more question. Uh, a lot of the big guys, the Betty Montgomery's, the Josh Baez's, is uh, they are definitely, you know, rising to the top. They're the cream of the crop, if you will. Uh, is there a guy in this class? I want each of you to answer. Is there a, is there a guy in this class that maybe people aren't talking about that just kind of opened your eyes at uh, at area code games and you think is probably going to get more uh, attention from scouts moving forward because of it? Oh, uh, there, there is one guy for me personally. I know the Rangers, we kind of knacked on them a little bit because they didn't really have that strong a roster, we thought, at first. But their pitching was really impressive. Um, Mason Marriott is one of them. He was really, really solid, really repeatable delivery. He was 92-95, had a power slider that had really good spin to it. Um, there was a changeup in there as well. I think he's going to be someone they can keep an eye on through the Texas uh, State games and all that fun stuff whenever you get to, you know, spring and all that. But he looked really, really good. There's another guy from the Rangers, Ryan Johnson, who was touching 96 from a delivery that looked like he was quick pitching everyone. It was pretty impressive. Uh, it was like 93, 96 to start off, went down to like 90, 95. Slider, change up. It looked really, really good despite the fact that we were kind of wondering how his you know, body was not aching after watching the delivery <laughs> a little bit. So it, it, those are two arms I think are going to be pretty pretty impressive kids, and I think they're going to rise up uh, draft boards here in a little bit, just judging off of how I saw them at area code. How about you, James? Um, one guy who's impressed me a lot that I keep seeing the name is Vincent Trapani. Um, he's, he's not going to blow you away with maybe having the best fastball or, you know, best secondary, but he's a guy who consistently pounds his own. It shows good command and really has a good feel for pitching where, you know, I think he's from Wisconsin and one of the guys who impressed me was the Alabama freshman, the left-hander that they had. Um, but I think that he's kind of similar where he's going to be, more advanced, and he'll probably go to college and, and have a lot of success, success with Arkansas. But he's one guy. I mean, two guys, if you want to say that I really that impressed me as far as projectability. Um, so Max Debiak and Caden Byer, both those guys, you know, long, lanky, good fastballs, you know, with the body to drink for a little bit more. Nice. Well, 
I, I got to tell you, I'm, I'm surprised we made it 15 minutes without bringing up Malachi Knight, but hey, <laughs> Malachi is my dude. Uh, we brought up Max DeBeck, so we covered half of the area. Um, last question that I kind of want to, I want to jump into because, uh, we're, you know, we're almost two years away from it, but Tamar Johnson, Elijah Green, these two really standing out for the 2022 class. We don't have too much time, but Tyler, James, uh, let's start with James. Why don't you just give me a, a short synopsis on, uh, just how different these two look compared to the rest of their class. Well, Tamar, I think he has probably the loudest hit tool. Um, and that's both classes um, that we had a chance to see because he was playing with the upper class. Um, so definitely, he's just as bad. His feel for hitting. Um, bad, he's a he's a special defensive player who is very versatile, can play with pretty much wherever you want him to and hold his own very well. Um, then with uh, Elijah Green, it's it's he's a five-tool talent. Um, there's not a whole lot of things that he can't really do. Um and, it, and the biggest thing that's bo- that stood out with him is his power. Like he didn't hit any home runs that were oh questionable. They were all no doubters. So he hit one like twenty feet over the center field fence. Another one opposite field. Um, just powered off fields at underclass. You know, two years away, and it's just like wow, what's it going to be in a year from now? And then what could it be in five or six years from now? Special. Yeah. Just 16 years old still. I'd maybe just turned 17, but yeah, he's a different breed. Tyler? Yeah, no. Uh, Tamar, like James said, has got one of the loudest hits holes I think I've seen from a kid at that age. It, I'm pretty sure Diamond Kinetics had a bat speed of like 80 miles per hour or something like that, which was absolutely insane to even look at my feet on that. Um, he was consistent without contact. He caught up to Chase Petty with 100 somehow and almost dropped it in for a hit, which I thought was really impressive just from, mm-hmm. you know, just from hitting Chase Petty a hundred mile an hour fastball at 8 a.m. in the morning. I, <laughs> you, you, I can't do that. I, I right. really, but I'm surprised he, he looked really, really good. Uh, Elijah Green as well. Um, James brings up the home runs. The first game that he had, the first at bat was the center field ball. And I was pretty mad at myself for not getting that video. So I figured, I'll go back for the third at bat, and he took it opposite field, and they cleared defense by a solid 15, 20, maybe even 25 feet. It wasn't just a little binky hit that just happened to go over the fence. I mean, he knew off the bat that it was gone, and and then he hit another one uh, a couple of days later. But um, with Elijah, the Stefan going to be uh, power over hit. Um, didn't really get a look, good look at him in the outfield, to be honest with you. But um, he does have a little – Issue kind of like Brady House with breaking balls. It does chase a little bit, but once he can get contact on a ball, it's going to go far. There's no doubt about that. You know, one last quick question, just because I think it might have some pertinence. Uh, if you're comparing, I'll give this one to Tyler and then we'll wrap it up. Uh, if you're comparing Tamar Johnson and Jordan Lawler, um, kind of how would you stack them up as it, as it would rank in this class? In this class? Um... That's a tough one. I kind of think they're similar. I don't want to say they're similar styles, but they're kind of similar players in, in a way. Um, just from the fact that I've seen Lawler more, I probably just put Lawler just ahead of Tamar, but I think um, it's going to be really, really close between the two. And if Tamar happens to reclassify, it, we're not sure if that is going to happen, but if it does, they're both they're probably going to be really close in the rankings together. I think, in my opinion. Gotcha, James. Any last words? Um. Yeah, just on that last one, it to me was uh, Lawler. It's to me, I like Lawler's body, but if you want to say hit tool, I feel a lot more, a little bit more confident in Tamar. The power, I could see Lawler having a little bit more power. Um, speed, I think they're pretty comparable. So I think Tamar is definitely a, more exciting because of the hit tool, but Lawler, there's more probably projectability, and there's a little bit more that you could see coming from him. I think you're right. Yeah, I think Tamar's kind of got that spark plug uh, build, body body type that uh, is the top of the order guy. And, uh, you know, Lawler, he could be 6'3", 195. He could be 6'3", 200 uh, by the time he debuts, which, I mean, if you look in the league, those 6'3", 200-pound shortstops, uh, 
They are special. So um, we'll leave it at that. Guys, I want to thank you for joining us. Um, you guys have been our eyes in the sky and on the ground here for a lot of these events, and uh, we can't thank you enough. Uh, thank you, listeners. Thank you, watchers, for anyone that's watching us on YouTube. We'll be back for more interviews and insight from guys like this uh, very, very soon.